Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. So first things first, as you can see behind me there, just so we're not staring at a blank cream wall whenever I do a, a little piece in the office here. Just wanna thank Sam at Tintin Express for, for doing this sign for us. Remember Sam is the guy that's done the the graphics on both of the vans. He's done the PPF on, well, he does it on all my vehicles. He's done it on the van, my personal vehicle, my Lamborghini. Um, fantastic lad. Any graphics, PPF, wrapping, anything like that, he is your man. So thank you very much, Sam, for that. Moving on, it's going to be a bit of a cross flow day. So we've got the cross flow um, that Paul is building, the blue one. Um, that is a proper all out tuned motor that's going to be and uh, so it's going to be higher compression race cam um, we've got forged pistons h section rods trick bearings all the rest of it ported head big valve uh, this engine is going to be running on 45 webers and it's going in a fully raced up mark one escort so you've got the the bubble arches cage um, plastic windows the whole shooting match so really looking forward to seeing that that car there um, I spoke to Roger, the owner, this morning, and he's hopefully, in the spring, with fingers crossed, um, going to meet up with us in our kit car at Castle Coombe um, and see the end result of the engine. And he said that we could go out in the car. So really looking forward to putting that in a video, guys. Um, but that's going to be a very nice peaky motor. But what we're going to do is we're going to go out into the workshop and we're going to um, get Paul to run us through some of the tricks of building one of these competition motors. Um, secondly... We are going to go out and have a look at the pre-cross flow engine. So that is the one where the bearing caps are on the one way round. Um, now this is a genuine Cosworth built pre-cross flow in, from a Lotus 7, I believe. And um, this is going to be a fairly trick motor itself. So the engine was all built. Um, it was all fresh. Most of it was all perfect, you know, like the bores and everything. It's all great. Um, the customer wanted it stripped, checked, put back together if it was, you know, it, so it's all good. And then he was going to sell it. But I think what he's going to do now, he's going to keep it. Um, and he's, we're going to throw a few more trick bits in. So he has ordered QED rods and crank in steel. Um, we're going to be putting them in. Forge pistons from Burton Power. They've just arrived, so we're going to be doing our own compression ratio, and that is what we're going to show you in today's video. First of all, I'm going to be checking the CCs in the cylinder head. Now, what we've got is a flat top piston, so the piston is going to be flush to the top of the block, and with this particular engine, we can get different thicknesses in multi-layer steel gaskets. So we're going to have a look at it. We might have to do a bit of modding on the piston crown. Um, we are going to be, the head has been ported and all gone through. So I'm going to show you how to CC the head up and then work out the compression ratio. So quite interesting stuff today, guys. Um, but let's head out there and um, I'll show you how that's done. So what are we doing here, Lee? What we are doing here, Paul, this is the pre-cross flow. And as I explained in the office a second ago, we are going to CC the uh, volume and what I mean by that is we're going to find out exactly how many cc's we have in the volume on TDC um, in obviously the combustion chamber of the head, the gasket, and if any, in the, the bowl in the piston. From that, we can then work out from the bore size, the stroke, um, and obviously these cc's, what compression ratio the engine is. Okay, so. Firstly, what I'll do is I'll do the cylinder head. Now on this particular engine, it's a flat top piston. So the piston is flat, you see here, and it is, it is see there? So there's no bowl in there to work out the CCs of. That is gonna be flat with the top of the block. So the only other volume is gonna be the head gasket. All right, but I'll show you how to do that afterwards. So what we do to do this, obviously have the face of the head upright, Spark plug in, valves all in with the springs on. As long as everything is finished and the head is faced, then you know it's not gonna change. So what I do is I use our little bit of perspex here. Mm -hmm. We've got a hole here and a hole here. Now the hole here is to inject fluid into, and the other hole is for the air to escape, okay? So what we do is we inject um, paraffin, I do, something very thin. 
We smear some grease around the edge here, obviously plug in, valves in so the, the fluid can't leak out anywhere. I'll put a bit of red grease so just so I can see where the grease is sitting and then I put the perspex on the top and press it down so you can just see all the grease, all right? And now we've got our large pipette here. Yep. And I filled this exactly 50, 50 mils of paraffin. So we pop that in the top there and we just inject slowly. Now if you didn't have that other hole in there, it would try and push out the side of the, of the, um, the grease. You can see the air bubbles start to get smaller and smaller. Okay, just very, very slowly until that is starting to come out there. 11 mil, so that has took 39 mil. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the office. I'm going to show you the formula that we use to calculate this compression ratio. All right, let's go over and see how Paul's getting on with the, the cross flow engine. Morning, Morning, boy, boy. How you doing? Not too bad, mate, yourself? Yeah, so how far we got here, mate? What's, what's going on? Right, so we've got two pistons in. Yeah. I've measured the bearing clearance on those two. Okay. Classy gauge. Um, and I'm going to put this turbo in and we're we'll measure the clearance on, on camera, I guess. We've dummy built it, got one of these pistons up to TDC. Um, and the piston was, what, 5,000 protrude in the top of the block, because obviously we've skimmed the block. Yeah. So I've set these pistons up and I've just removed 5 thou off the edge of, of these pistons so they sit dead flush. With these pistons here, they give a, an approximate 12 to 1 compression ratio. Yeah. Um, but that will be with a standard gasket. We're going to go for a 1.5 mil thick gasket. Yeah, we're going to go very slightly thick on the gasket. Yeah. Um, and also, you've got to be careful on these multi-layer steels, is to get the right diameter. Because we've gone out to 83.5, we're going to want an 84 mil diameter gasket. Um, so with a bit of luck, we're we're in the 11 to ones. Yeah, we'll have to work it out properly. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll work do it a, out properly. We'll um, do it. But we've got we've had a look at the cam, and the camshaft in it is a Kent 264 cam, which apparently in the book is a full race. Um, gives you what does it give you? About 12 and a half mil of valve lift. Yeah, it's about 12 and a half and 12.6 or 12.4. Like it's always this. So I've spoke to the customer and he wants to leave that in there because this engine is going in a sort of full raced out Mark 1 Escort. Yeah. Wide arch, fiberglass, plastic windows, the whole shooting match, I think. So um, Very fast. He wants it nice and peaky. That's what we want. So as you've probably seen in previous videos, obviously make sure the rings are offset when you put the ring clamp on. Yeah. Obviously lube the piston up and the rings, lube the bore up. I'm going to plastic gauge these bearings, but I always lightly lubricate this bearing anyway. Yeah. So, let me stick this in. Make sure, obviously, the piston, it's not a piston, the crank is on sort of bottom dead center, as you say. So, yep. when you knock these down, you don't damage the crank journal. Okay. On com rods that have studs um, sticking out in rather than bolts. Yeah. Um, you can get these, like, Carrillo doing them all, most modern rod manufacturers, little covers, so you obviously don't damage the... Um, right, okay. Or, or um, just to note on here, if you notice we've got the valve cutouts here, firstly, you've got to make sure the piston goes around the right way. Yes. Um, because you'll find if you don't, it, although it looks like the, the valve cutouts are a lot more offset this way, and it looks, it could go the other way, um, the valves are not going to go down into these pockets at all. So you've got to make sure they're the right, the right way round. And also, if you note, you'll notice here, you've got an exhaust cutout and an inlet cutout. They're very slightly different. And you've got to make sure they go the right way on both the pistons. So the pistons are handed, really. Yep. You've got, you'll have one and three pistons and two and four pistons, because obviously you've got the inlet valves in the center of, of one and two and the same in three and four, so you've got to make sure they go around the right way. Yeah, it's worth working it out before you... Uh, Very important. Put it together. There we go. Right. Better get my um, 
plastic gauge out. Okay. So for all you viewers that are not a big fan of um, plastic gauging, we basically do it as a belt and braces, don't we, Paul? Well, yeah, so plastic gauge is a good indication. So ultimately, we've worked out what clearance we're going to have before we put this engine together. Yeah. Uh, we obviously check the rod housing size of the bore gauge. Yeah. So we can see in distortion, and we can actually work out what we're running. That's right, yeah. And John, so, John always measures the crank, so we know what the crank size is, we know what the... Um, yeah, the so you've got, you, on, the, on the crank journal, you've got a tolerance um, and a top and bottom limit, and the same with the rod housing. So you've got to work out sort of what clearance you want to run. Yeah. Um, and it's no good just just doing it all on the on the rod housing if the crank measures on say top or bottom limit so all the plastic gauge is is a sort of good visible indication of what clearance you're actually getting so yeah so this is basically confirming what we already worked out and it works the plastic gauge works better on a fresh motor because um, or when you're building a motor because it, it's a better indication if the journal's perfectly round and same with the the rod housing if you've got a rod housing that isn't perfectly round, as we've seen before on the Cosworth and that, then um, it will be a good indication on the sort of area where you put the plastic gauge, but it might be different 40, you know, 90 degrees. Yeah, I mean, what I should imagine would be maybe just under 2,000 these, but if we get 2,000 or 1 point whatever thou there, yeah. that's one point out at that point in the journal. It's not yeah. telling you what it is on the side, but That's obviously right, yeah. we worked that already by doing obviously a clearance check. Yeah, so if you size if you size the rod and you've and the crank's perfectly round, then you know that it's going to be the same clearance all the way around the journal. Yeah. So this plastic gauge here, if none of you know how it works, all you do is a specific sort of um, diameter gauge. You just cut off slightly less than the width for the journal and Paul just lays it on the top in that area. Then you, you torque talk up the journal and you've got a, a gauge here. So whatever that plastic gauge, the thickness it ends up, you, you put this next to it and it sort of gives you an indication of how many thou, thousandths of an inch um, clearance you're running basically. So. Obviously, you've talked that up the LLP lube. So you can see now the plastic gauge is squished. We need to be measuring the width for that, and that's going to give you a. So. So I would have said we're well, about 1.7, 1.8 thou in the bearing clearance there. Which looks about right there, really. Which is fine. I wouldn't want it to be any less than one and a half mil. No. Uh, one and a half thousand, sorry. But that's fine, I'm happy with that. I mean, that's pretty much what the other measured at. They're about 1.8 those. Yeah. The other thing as well I always check is end float on the rod. So end float that way. Yeah. So best way to do that, simple way is get a freely gauge in there. Uh, make sure you've got end float both ways. Yeah. So you, you don't want, there's a rod up against um, the crank here, yeah. Otherwise, you potentially going to start rub the rod. You're going to create excess heat, basically. That's so right. Yeah. So you want a bit of you want a bit of end float there. I measured that already. We're for about five thousand either side, so ten thousand overall. That's fine. Okay. Some rod manufacturers, these tags, uh, I found in certain rods aren't always exactly in no. line. So on this rod here, sometimes the the tags on the bearings are narrower than the. Yeah, well, you can have a point. This isn't too bad. This one maybe sits slightly over, but you can have a problem with this bearing. Mm -hmm. The tag locates, sorry, the tag on the bearing locates and the, the bearing sits too far over on the rod. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So you can have a problem with this sort of bearing can run in the radius of the crank. Yeah. And then that creates excess heat. Obviously, that will destroy the bearing. Yeah. And wear the bearing. And ultimately, you're probably going to throw a rod out the side of it. So you want to get it visibly central. Yeah, and obviously, a good way of checking that as well is obviously look at the rod here. Yeah. And obviously make sure, obviously, you, the bearing isn't touching the radius, which is fine here. Yeah. I see uh, that down there, yeah. Perfect. But you can see the radius in the corner of the crank journal. The radius is very important to the strength of the journal. You don't want to be grinding that. You need the, the right amount of radius on there to keep yeah. its strength, otherwise you can end up with a, a weak spot down here. But you see the bearing is sitting 
away from that radius either side. So guys, that is it for today's video. There's gonna be a part two in the next video really of working out the compression ratios, um, showing you how that's done, and also a bit more on Paul's cross flow. But hope you learn a little bit there guys, a um, little bit of a change from the warranty issues. Um, but until another video, have a great weekend and we will see you soon. Take care guys.